so this is where um, the incident happened. I call it the incident for me as uh, we had just taken over Kandahar and we were staying in Mullah Omar's compound. We had missed Mullah Omar. He'd gotten away. Yeah. But we, had, we did end up taking over Kandahar. And uh, so it was the team I was with. And it wasn't just the team, but we were moving with Car's Eyes men. Andy was moving with Shar's Eyes men. Um, and those two did, Car's Eyes and Shar's Eyes didn't really get along that great. So there was okay. a lot of like, hey, those are bad guys over there when it was really us. And same, same, you know, they would try and be like, oh, those are bad guys over there. But it was like Andy and them, you know. So we had to be real careful with that stuff too. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, but, uh, so Andy swept around, they took the airport and it was the team I was with and another team ended up going through and, and clearing out Kandahar proper itself. And then we ended up, my team, we ended up going back to Mullah Omar's and setting up base camp there. Okay. Uh, and if you've ever been to Kandahar area, it was called Gecko is I yep. think the original name of that place. And so that's yeah, where yeah. we set up. Okay. And so we started, you know, uh, that's, so we had our, our host nation forces with us there. Again, you, you're, the trust level was very low because we, oh, yeah. we are, we found that every time we started to get into a fight, we were the ones that ended up in front and they ended up in the back and that, that was supposed to be the other way around. Sure. They were supposed to be doing the main fight and we were supposed to be in the back pushing them. And, the, uh, and the, it always ended up that we would be in the front, uh, doing the fight and then they would be pulling up the rear. So hmm. the trust level wasn't there. So we still pulled, you know, it was just us. So we could, we, we found that we could not stay in the main compound. It was just too big. Yeah. So we ended up moving up to the, to the, one of the corners where it had this like big 35 foot tower or something. And, and so we would, we would still do our own security. Two guys would go up and pull pretty much security 24 seven, but you'd always have yeah, two yeah. guys up. Uh, so, we had just gotten done taking over Kandahar. I think the Marines are coming in to officially secure the airport. Um, right. But uh, <laughs> Cubic and them had already been there. Yeah, they, yeah. I remember the Marines ended up getting lost. So we had to push out a contingent to go grab them and convoy them into the, the air, airport where Cubic was. Okay. Um, and then again, I think they made them take down the flag and then the Marines hoisted the flag saying Marines take Kandahar. <laughs> but I think in the newsreel, if you look on the back, Texas 1-7 was up on the the um, the control tower. Okay. All signed Texas 1-7's up in the back, spray painted on it. So everybody knows <laughs> nice. the real deal on that. Um, but again, that was Andy and his team. So I think it was that night we're bringing in some British, uh, special unit teams. Right. Uh, so we had 53s coming in and we were setting up, we had set up the LZ or the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the landing zone right outside Mul Omar's compound, big open space. And there's still like sporadic AAA and stuff going off, you know, nothing coordinated, of course, you know, but you know, there are still dudes up in the mountains hiding and just trying to shoot right. some stuff off and, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so I think the air crews were still a little nervous, rightly so, I, I believe. Sure. So we were bringing in these uh, British dudes, and it was me and Tracy uh, and about four or five guys from the from the ODA were out at there, and they were bringing in the helicopters. And Tracy was controlling. And the, dude, these, the 53s kept trying to force it in, right? And they would white out dust out and white out so they would take back off and uh tracy was kept trying to give them direction like hey you have to come in from this direction well i remember i think the one helicopter finally got on the ground we unloaded it uh this one of the brits dudes came over and he was standing next to me by the truck and the other helicopter was coming back in uh to land after the first helicopter took off because they figured, okay, both of them trying to land just wasn't working. If we land them one at a time, we'll be able to to do it. So I remember all of a sudden starting to get pelted by rocks real bad. 
Yeah. And Tracy was like on my right. And I look over at Tracy, I look over to Tracy. I'm like, abort them MFers, you know, abort them, abort them. And I look over and he's gone. Oh no. Um, and I'm like, where the hell is he? Uh, and then all of a sudden, boom, I hear this, you know, big thud. The helicopter comes down and hits the truck. And instead of moving away from the truck, it moved to our side. And and we're all oh, like man. moving away and crouching down. And then next thing you, you just feel the, the weight bouncing you off the ground, right? Uh, I, I don't do the splits, but I did that <laughs> night because I was crouching. My legs went straight out. Um, oh, my God. Face, I have my MVGs on. Face gets crunched into the ground. Um, my, I think my weapon stopped, like, just dug into my shoulder. Wait, so the, the helicopter landed on your truck or landed on you or both? It, or? It, it, on bo- it hit the truck, and then once it f- helped to hit the truck, it moved over. Oh, my God. Uh, and so it ended up getting a few of us underneath it. So I think after this, the second time I got hit, I, I got pushed down on, I rolled back. And by this time they picked up and they grabbed the, I think they grabbed the truck with one of their wheels or something and moved the truck to you. So oh the truck was like God. 15 feet away from us. But as I rolled back, I rolled into this guy on the ground and I'm like, man, uh, I thought it was Tracy. Cause I thought I rolled to my right and there was only one guy on my right and it was Tracy. Right. And I roll it. And so I'm like, Tra- I'm like trying to, to get his attention. Cause he's like sub, he is in and out of consciousness kind of yes. and all of a sudden this this other guy comes like crawling up to me and he shines a light on the the dude who's out um and tracy's a black guy so when i uh-huh. saw the light the dude that was on the ground was a white dude so immediately it's not tracy and i'm like who yeah, the yeah. heck is this guy and i didn't know him I, I, I the face didn't i didn't recognize the face right it was the british dude that had just landed and uh and so I look at Tracy, I'm like, what the hell? He's like, dude. So what had happened was the hell as the helicopter was coming down, that the the backwash was so violent that it took Tracy's rucksack, because he had it sitting next to him and it pushed it away. So he ran to grab the mic to abort him because you know his he was like he was like on his hands and knees trying to find his room oh my with the radio God. in it. Thank God, because he yeah, could yeah. have been he probably could have gotten injured if he wasn't. Sure, was, sure. Um, so we start assessing this guy and he's, he's jacked up. Right. So I get up, I run over, I run over to the truck and we had a litter on the truck. I cut the litter off. We come back and we start getting this guy on the litter. And now the 53 is like landed over, you know, on the other side of the truck and the load master comes out and I'm just like, dude, what the hell? And he's like, we got to go. So we get this dude on, we get this British guy onto the the litter and get him onto the back of the 53. And I remember us carrying him on and I just saw this Air Force. I don't know. I want to say he was a master. I don't know, but I just remember looking at him and I grabbed him like, what the hell? And I'm just like yelling at him like, what is yeah. your problem? Um, and then one of the team guys grabs me and starts pulling me off the back of the 53. He's like, we got to get out of here. They got to get out of here. And so I step off the 53 and I just collapse. And I'm like, man, something's wrong with my leg. Oh, no. So I, I look up at, at the, the medic on the team. I'm like, Jay, my, my freaking leg's hurting. So they like pull me aside and they just cut my pant leg right then, right? Because yeah. I felt something, but with all that adrenaline, I didn't notice anything. So sure. they cut my pant leg open and they're trying to look at my leg and they're like, dude, we can't it's already swelling, but we can't tell if it's broke or not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're like, do you want to get evac? And I was like, no, I was like, no, I was like, dude, if I get back on that helicopter, they'll probably throw me out the back of some of the words I just said to them, you know? <laughs> 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 so I was like, so they're like, well, we'll assess it. And if it's broke, if we can, we'll check it out. And if it's broke, then we're going to have to evac you. Yeah. So next thing I know, they give me a shot. Uh, I go to La La Land for a while right. um, and I, I wake up the next morning and I walk, uh, hobble out of the, the little place I was staying. I see our truck and it's just like, 
crunched. Oh. <laughs> and they have like this big old helicopter on the hood of the truck with a circle and a cross over it. And <laughs> uh, so it's like, well, yeah, there's one, one's down. <laughs> um, so I was, I was in some pain. Uh, and I, I don't know if I should have got evac or not, but I didn't. And yeah. the, what was kind of cool is remember that tower I told you that we were, we would go up and pull guard duty. That yeah, was yeah. my rehab. Oh, okay. I had, I had a torn ACL is what I had. I had oh, okay. Torn ACL, two, two pulled groins, uh, sprained, uh, ankle. My back was like black and blue. Um, Jeez. uh, cuts on my face from the MBGs. Uh, but, uh, I was healthy enough to stay and they, and I climbed this ladder up the tower every day, twi- at least twice a day. And that was my rehab. And, nice. and they were, you know, I was a little skeptical of helicopters coming in after that, you know, no but doubt. They, um, you know, they made me get back out there. And the day we, we, we put, uh, cars, on the helicopter to go up to become president, you know, I, I was out there and then we had a couple of, uh, resupplies come in and they made me go out there and, and run. They didn't make me there. Like you're going out to, you know, we need you to go do the LCs. And I was sure. like, man. And of course, you know, I was finding like the lowest point trying to find a ditch. <laughs> right. you know? These guys are coming to me like, it's GG laying on me again. Oh but, my uh, God. I mean, dude, it's, it could have been a lot worse for sure. I mean, obviously, but man, that's, that's horrible. Cause you, yeah. cause at that, at that point, I mean, it's brown out. It's night. You got nods huh. on. I mean, it's it, just chaos. I'm sure. I mean, you had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Jeez, um, man. And there's not like a lot of people around, you know. Right. You don't have a hospital. There's no hospital exactly. there. There's. Not, um. So so and we end up staying there, and that was early still. You know, we're talking like yeah. December's fifth or sixth. I want to say this happened. So. Yeah. Um, very early, very early. Yeah. Like you said, there's nothing there, not no real infrastructure, no real support system. I mean, it was, yeah, you guys were kind of on your own yeah. for most, for the most part. Yeah, no, it was, it was nuts. 